All right. Uh, good afternoon. Um, just a couple of programming notes. Uh, 3, th 3 p.m. this afternoon, the Security Council will meet uh, to hold a meeting on maintenance of peace and security. Uh, and that will focus on Ukraine. Khaled Kiari, the Assistant Secretary General for Political and Peacebuilding Affairs, will brief on behalf of the Secretariat. On Monday at 1 p.m., there will be a briefing here, chaired by Maher Nasser, Director of the Outreach Division in the Department of Global Communications. Um, this is to brief you on the conference that DGC will host together with civil society. Uh, which is a 2024 UN Civil Society Conference in support of the Summit of the Future under the theme Shaping a, F a Future of Global and Sustainable Progress. <clears throat> it will take place on the 9th and 10th of May at the UN offices in Nairobi and will provide an opportunity for multi-stakeholder engagement ahead of the Summit of the Future and a venue for civil society to participate in the preparations process. Um, Happy International Women's Day, and a happy birthday to Gisela Schwinghammer, Benno's mom. Uh, she will please. be so happy. Excellent. She turned uh, 74. She doesn't want anybody to know. But You're a very bad son, Benno. You're a very bad son. Exactly. You should have quit while you were ahead. Anyway. Um, as you will have seen this morning uh, to mark the day, in, uh, the Secretary General spoke in the ECOSOC chamber. He said that in communities across the globe, millions of women and girls are working to demand change, combat stereotypes, and mark their voices and make their voices heard. We stand with them today. We thank them and we applaud all that they have achieved, he said. However, also, he also noted that progress towards uh, equality has been far too slow. He underscored that the global crises we face are hitting women and girls the hardest, from poverty and hunger to climate disaster, war and terror. He also reiterated that gender equality is the foundation of the entire 2030 agenda, from ending poverty to securing peace. He called on countries to drastically up the pace of change. For their part, our colleagues at UN Women are calling on investing in women to accelerate progress as the best way to accelerate economic growth and build more prosperous and equitable societies. This is particularly urgent when war and crisis are eroding the achievements of decades of investment in gender equality, with one in every 10 women in the world living in extreme poverty and double the number of women and girls living in conflict areas compared to 2017, the need to invest on women's empowerment is more urgent than ever. And there are lots of other statements um, from uh, all across the UN system on International Women's Day and a lot of activities at the local level as well. Uh, I want to update you on Gaza and the broader Middle East as well as Haiti. So starting with Gaza, I can tell you that today our humanitarian colleagues said that in northern uh, Gaza, um, there was a mission that involved OCHA, UNFPA, UNRWA, WFP, our security colleagues, and the International Committee for the Red Cross. Among other work, they delivered maternity medicine and anesthetics to Al Hali Hospital and Asaba Hospitals. They also assessed the conditions for the coastal road north of the Israeli checkpoint, which was uh, observed to be an extremely deteriorated condition. As of yesterday afternoon, uh, you saw that Sigrid Kog, our Senior Reconstruction Humanitarian Coordinator for Gaza briefed the Council and then uh, briefed you on the work she's been doing since she last spoke to both you and the Council. Uh, the Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs, uh, Martin Griffiths, warned today that as hostilities in Gaza enter six months, more than half a million people are on the brink of famine and children are dying of hunger. In social media posts, Mr. Griffiths said the humanitarian community knows what to do to save lives in Gaza, but we need the right conditions and guarantees. These include a ceasefire and full adherence to the rules of war, additional entry points, supply routes and storage capacity in Gaza, better protection for aid convoys, the free and safe movements of humanitarian supplies through checkpoints, road repairs, clearances of unexploded ordnance, and a bigger role for the commercial sector. He also said that the fact that the remaining hostages have yet to be released 
should keep us all awake at night. Meanwhile, the Commissioner General of UNRWA, Philippe Lazzarini, said he's profoundly saddened that on International Women's Day, women in Gaza continue to endure the consequences of this brutal war. They are giving birth without basic medical assistance. They lack menstrual hygiene products, and they are living without privacy in exceptionally unsanitary conditions. UNRWA teams are working tirelessly to support women's committees in overcrowded shelters and to provide psychosocial support and create safe space for women and girls. Uh, Tor Venislan, the UN Special Coordinator for the Middle East Peace Process, said today that five, that, uh, five months have passed since the beginning, since the acts of, of terror committed by, uh, by Hamas in Israel, including the kidnapping of 250 people and the onset of hostilities in Gaza. He said, too many lives have been lost, too many families have been left in agony. We need to end this misery now, he said one that will lead to the immediate release of all remaining hostages, Israeli hostages, and a ceasefire that will enable a scale-up of critical humanitarian assistance to reach all Palestinians in desperate need in Gaza. Also today, I want to flag that Volker Turk, the High Commissioner for Human Rights, deplored Israel's latest actions regarding the occupied West, um, uh, West Bank. He said the drastic acceleration in settlement building is worsening long-standing patterns of oppression, violence, and discrimination against uh, Palestinians. Reports, he said this week, that Israel plans to build further 3,476 settler homes in Mal Adumin, Efrat, and Kedar fly in the face of international law. Um, just, sorry, before moving on, uh, just on Yemen, I can tell you the Secretary General condemns the Attack on March 6 of the uh, motor vessel True Confidence, uh, claimed by the, uh, the attack was claimed by the Houthis, which reportedly killed three crew members and injured four others. He, the Secretary General reiterates that attacks against international shipping in the Red Sea area are not acceptable and must cease. These attacks endanger the safety and security of seafarers, freedom of navigation, the stability of a global supply chain, and have a negative impact on the economic and humanitarian situations in Yemen and beyond. The Secretary General underscores that the UN Security Council Resolution 2722 must be respected in its entirety. And I have a quite lengthy humanitarian update for you on Haiti, and obviously we remain deeply uh, concerned by the rapidly deteriorating security situation amid ongoing gang violence and sporadic confrontations between heavily armed gangs and police forces in some parts of the capital, Port-au-Prince. Our colleagues on the ground tell us that the Haitian National Police have been able to push back coordinated gang attacks on key infrastructure, including the airport. We are, however, very worried about reports of gangs having breached and looted the Port-au-Prince Port seaport. Uh, port operations have been suspended for some days now. The Secretary General reiterates his call on the government and all national stakeholders to agree on immediate steps to advance the political process uh, that will lead to elections. He also reiterates the need for urgent international action, including immediate financial support for the multinational security support mission, which is, it needs, which is desperately needed to tackle uh, insecurity in Haiti. Uh, I can confirm also that the United Nations has been invited to attend uh, the meeting organized by CARICOM that will take place on Monday, and that meeting will take place at CARICOM headquarters in Kingston, in Jamaica. Uh, the, our chef de cabinet, Courtney Rattre, will attend the meeting along with several international partners to foster support towards the restoration of democratic institutions in Haiti in the shortest possible amount of time. On the humanitarian front, we and our partners continue to support civilians despite the ongoing violence and limited access. Um, in a statement uh, issued this morning, Port-au-Prince, the UN humanitarian team said that gender-based violence protection services have been reduced or suspended for security and access reasons. They say that if violence continues in the Port-au-Prince metropolitan area, about 3,000 pregnant women could be denied access to essential health care. Yesterday, the World Food Program and its partners managed to deliver about meals for 7,000 people. 
Earlier this month, food rations were also provided to 9,000 people in Cité Soleil, including pregnant women and orphans, through local faith-based organization. More aid distributions are planned in the coming days, um, but I want to provide granularity to some of the operational details that I shared with you yesterday. Uh, WFP had suspended its uh, maritime transport on 23rd February, and not yesterday, as I spoke in error. That is due, of course, to the increasing insecurity. While WFP has other means outside of Port-au-Prince to bring in or purchase food, the suspension of the Maritime Road um, presents a challenge for humanitarians and development organizations to deliver food and medical supplies uh, from the capital to the uh, Great North and Great South areas of Haiti. For example, in Gonaive and Jeremy, the World Food Program used mobile money to send cash to about 14,000 vulnerable people in the first week of March. The humanitarian community reiterates the call to all parties to allow for safe, unhindered uh, access to all people in need in line with humanitarian principles, norms, and frankly, basic decency. Um, quick humanitarian update from the uh, DRC. Turning to uh, our colleagues at OCHA says they're concerned about the resurgence of violence in the Jugu territory in Ituri province in the east of the country. On the 6th of March, according to our humanitarian partners on the ground, armed groups attacked the Drodo Hospital in Jugu territory, resulting in the death of an 80-year-old woman who was receiving treatment at the time. The attackers ransacked the healthcare facilities and looted vital equipment and medication, forcing nursing staff and patients to leave the hospital. The increased insecurity in the Drodro region has led to 10 humanitarian organizations to temporarily halt their operations, ma uh, maintaining only a minimal presence in the area to carry out life-threatening, uh, life-essential action. The suspension of humanitarian operations has directly impacted the provision of assistance to more than 80,000 people within the Drogo region. As of the 29th of February, the Turi province has 1.8 million people displaced, over half of them in the Drugu territory. And in Mozambique, the International Organization for Migration today warned that more than 110,000 people have been displaced since the end of last year by the resurgence of attack by non-state armed groups in distressing escalation of the situation in the Cabo Delgado province. IOM has been providing essential aid to more than 22,000 recently displaced individuals, but warned that only 15% of the required $43 million under Humanitarian Response Plan 2024 uh, secured. The looming risk of unmet needs could worsen an already critical situation. Also today, a joint, uh, following a joint visit by the High Commissioner for Refugees, Filippo Grandi, and um, Robert Piper, who is the Secretary General Special Advisor on Solutions to Internal Displacement, called for a renewed international commitment to finding solutions for displaced people in Mozambique. Almost done. Uh, FAO today reports that the benchmark for world food commodity prices declined for the seventh consecutive month in February. FAO price index averaged 117.3 points in February, down 0.7% from January and 10.5% from the same month last year. Also, FAO published a new report that says conflicts in Near East Asia and West and East Africa are driving alarmingly high levels of the most uh, severe phase of acute food insecurity with very high concerns for the situation of the population in Gaza. Widespread dry weather conditions are expected to aggravate food insecurity in Southern Africa, according to FAO. Two countries paid in full. Um, the first check came from a Caribbean nation. It's not an island nation because it shares its island with another country. Dominican. Yes, Dominican Republic. Okay. Um, we thank our um, uh, friends in Santo Domingo. What? I, did, I, I don't know. Uh, second, while not an island, this country gets its name from an indigenous word, which means land of many waters. It is in South America. It is bordered by the Atlantic to the north, Brazil to the south and southwest, and Venezuela to the west, and Suriname to the east. Guyana. Guyana. All right. We also thank our friends in Georgetown. I think, Edie, you did win. Sorry? 
Okay, all right, Edie, then Maggie. <laughs> so, um, it's cumulative. Steph, a couple of follow-ups yep. on Haiti and then a, a, another question. On, on Haiti, um, do you, does the UN know whether um, Ariel Henry is still in Puerto Rico? And can we um, get updates on whether the multinational support force trust fund has gotten any more money uh, yep. from, from the appeals, and is there any update on a date that it might deploy? Uh, no update on possible deployments. Um, I'm not aware of any big jump in money, but we will check. Um, and your first question, uh, Ariel Henry, uh, as last we've heard, he uh, remains in Puerto, in Puerto Rico, but that's what we read what I write in the media, frankly. And a second question. Uh, President Zelensky of Ukraine is in Turkey, and um, I wondered if one of the issues that he may be talking to the Turkish government about is the uh, restoration of the Black Sea Grain Initiative. Uh, he is indeed in Turkey, and I think that sounds like a great, uh, I mean, he's, um, sorry, I, um, we are aware of these talks, let me rephrase, we're aware of these talks, but I think it's best to ask to the participant of the talks what is being discussed. Margaret. I also would like to wish Mrs. Schwinghammer a happy birthday. Okay. <laughs> Mama Schwinghammer. Mama um, Schwinghammer. Also, on Haiti, uh, does uh, the chef de cabinet expect to see Prime Minister Henry in well, Kingston? Well, I, I mean, let, let's, I, I think um, we have, we're not involved, nor do we control uh, Mr. Henry's whereabouts. Obviously, if he finds himself in Kingston, I'm no doubt the chef de cabinet will see him or talk to him. But I, I, that implies a lot of steps that we can't confirm or have no knowledge about. Okay, I just didn't know if he had it on his schedule already. Yeah. And then on Gaza, you said the uh, team that went north assessed conditions for the coastal road and right. that they were in extremely deteriorated condition. So does that mean it's unusable? No, I, I, I don't want to use that word. I mean, obviously, uh, it's deteriorated condition. I think it'll, we're not saying it's unusable. Obviously, make, would make things more challenging. It'll probably have the impact on what kind of vehicles we can use. Okay, and then just one final uh, follow-up, please, uh, on the pier that the pier project yeah. for um, Gaza. The inspections are going to happen in Cyprus, apparently. Uh, you guys are just going to be dealing with the aid distribution within Gaza. Do you have any role in inspections? And is there? Uh, any concern that there could be like bottlenecks in Cyprus from inspections um, to movement to delivery? I mean, you know, we would want this to work as uh, as smoothly as uh, as possible. We do. Sigrid Cog has a team of uh, a technical team in Cyprus uh, to work with the partners who are organizing this uh, on. Um, on, on how it would work, obviously, uh, in, within the framework of the mechanisms under uh, Resolution 2720. Uh, I mean, Ms. Cog has been in close contact with the government of Cyprus as they are leading uh, the Maritime Corridor, uh, and she's been involved in discussions on, on the initiative as an additional access route to Gaza in line with her, her mandate. The operational details um, of the specific maritime shipments or the building of the dock or of the port are being managed by the partners to the, uh, to the initiative. Uh, Deji, Anade, then Sirife. Also on the pier, um, it seems the, the announcement by President Biden also draws some criticism uh, for two parts. One is some people said that uh, this pier uh, the maritime uh, humanitarian delivery might not be enough or cannot replace the land uh, route. And the second one is by doctor without, Doctors Without Borders. They said, and I quote, the U.S. plan for a temporary pier in Gaza to increase the flow of humanitarian aid is a glaring distraction from the real problem. Israelis indiscriminate and 
disproportionate military campaign and punishing siege. Um, so how, what, 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 what does the UN Secretary General uh, see on, this, on this, these two criticisms? Look, uh, it's not, we're not going to analyze whatever reactions there were to, uh, to the US speech. What I will tell you, and we've been saying this now for quite some time, there is no alternative to a larger scale uh, deployment of aid by land, right? Using more uh, access points, using the port of Ashdod as well. It, that, that being said, we, we don't have those things right now. So it, we are also obviously happy that aid will be coming through other, other means, but nothing can replace the large scale arrival of, of aid and commercial traffic through land routes. And I, I think just now you answered some of the roles the UN might play in this um, pier and uh, maritime corridor uh, operation. Will the UN decide uh, the location of this pier? No, we are not uh, involved in the construction. Uh, that's a question for those who are, who are, who are participating in, uh, in this. Uh, Sirife. Stefan, I also want to ask you if we could have more information on how the UN will be involved in this whole. I, I mean, we're yeah, we're, we're operation. listen. Everything is 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 fast moving. Uh, Ms. Cog and her team had been uh, in touch with uh, uh, with with the the, the partners. Uh, Jimmy McGoldrick had also been uh, in Cyprus, and I think I mentioned too. Tor had been there as well. But right now, Ms. Cog has a team. Uh, in Cyprus, uh, we're working through all the details. As more becomes available, we will share that with you. But I think it's also important to speak to those who are in the lead. I just also have a question about the airdrops. As you know, several countries have been inc increasingly airdropping food to Gaza, and there are reports that due to the failure of parachutes to open up, uh, several people have been killed and some have been injured trying to get humanitarian aid. So is there a way that the UN um, could, I, I don't know, do you have advice on how to improve these airdrops, how to make them safer, or Look, what is I, your... I, I have no... Uh First of all, we're, we're extremely saddened by the reports of people having been killed uh, during, during airdrops. Uh, we know that uh, the, the mili diff various militaries that are involved in these airdrops are, are very skillful and they, they know what they're doing. Uh, but all of this is being done in an active conflict zone. This yet should be a reminder of why we need an immediate humanitarian ceasefire, why we need more access uh, by road, why we need better coordination uh, with the Israeli authorities and better deconfliction. De de this is just what we, th this tragic exit is a symptom of the fact that we are not, we do not have a, an environment in which we can do large scale, predictable humanitarian delivery. Do you have any information about the incident? Like no, I, we who, do not. We do not. Who caused? No, we, we no. do not. Thank you. Anade. Thank you. Um, if you don't mind, I'd like to go back to the peers. So you and Ms. Cog have spoken a lot about the UN's involvement and role to get the peers set up. But can we clarify distribution-wise? Because it seems to be the issue particularly Jamie McGoldrick was talking about. Once the aid gets in, has anybody spoken about I, security? I think all of these things are being worked out, and that's one of the reasons uh, Ms. Cog has a team in, in Cyprus. So can I ask another question? Your distribution you reports talk about WHO, they talk about WFP, and aid supplies that they're taking to hospitals at the moment. Mm -hmm. What role do UNRWA staff have in the distribution of aid within Gaza? Well, UNRWA staff continues to operate uh, where they're able to. They have, from what I understand, they've not had large-scale distribution of aid north of, uh, of Wadi Gaza. And again, the, the aid distribution is opportunistic, mm -hmm. right? When we have a window, we can do something, we get the, we, you know, we, we have the, the vehicles, we have the, the deconfliction safety mechanisms we need in place, we do it. Uh, but it is opportunistic and it is not the, it is not the, the way to deliver humanitarian aid. Uh, Benno. Thank you, and uh, thank you for all the good wishes. Um, about the sea corridor, um, obviously I know it's not your plan, but are you concerned that hundreds of thousands of people desperate for food would migrate to this location uh, where there can be a lot uh, of Listen, this is why these, th these things, things uh, that's why we're in discussions when these things have to be managed, uh, managed safely. I mean, we saw the tragedy of what happened 
uh, last week in northern Gaza uh, with the trucks, and more than 100 Palestinians uh, were, were killed. Um, there's a lot of players here, right? Uh, and we just need to be coordinated, and aid needs to be delivered in a matter that is safe for those who deliver it, and most importantly, safe for those who need it. So Go you ahead. see it as a challenge? That's what I would I, I mean, I, I don't it. know what, I, what other words you could say, but challenge it, when describing aid operations in the mid middle of a conflict. And then let me let me touch on another thing. The, um, I I was watching the UN World's Women Days event today, and I was a bit irritated. The moderator was I'm, a man. Well, I'm, the first. I'm, I'm sorry, you were irritated. <laughs> <laughs> the moderator. That's quite serious. Actually. No, no. I'm sorry. The moderator I, I don't was to. a man. The first speaker, as you know, was a man. The second one as well. The th uh, third one as well. There was 30 minutes without a female voice in the room, and. Um, it's always said men should step aside to be an ally um, for uh, for on the way to equality. Where exactly did that I reflect today? I, I don't think, uh, to be honest, I don't think you were the only person who felt that irritation. Joe, and then uh, Jordan. Uh, thank you. Uh, it's been reported that Hamas has rejected uh, the latest six-month ceasefire proposal that would have been linked to staged releases of hostages in Gaza and Palestinian prisoners in Israel. So my first question is, will the Secretary General specifically call out Hamas for standing in the way uh, of what could be um, a fairly immediate six months ceasefire? And second, does the Secretary General believe that his call for unconditional release of all the hostages and for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire should be considered on separate tracks or that it would make more sense for them to be linked like the six months ceasefire proposal that Hamas rejected? Uh, I, I'm happy to take a walk with you, Joe, but I will not uh, be led into uh, micromanaging uh, negotiations that are going on with, as we've seen in the media, with Hamas and Egypt and Israel and, and, and others. We're not at the table. So it's not for, for me to, or for the Secretary General to get directly involved. I think he has been very clear that he wants to see all the hostages released. He wants to see a humanitarian ceasefire. He wants greater humanitarian assistance. Um, I think unconditional is unconditional. And I think when he, he laid out, uh, he's been laying out these messages from the beginning, I think, in a very clear manner. But I, I, it's, it, it is obvious to us, and I think to anyone who is reading in the media, that these discussions in the days, in just with a few days left before Ramadan, are at an extremely delicate point. Uh, and the Secretary General has made his opinion known, but those discussions are, uh, are, are ongoing, and I don't, I don't want to say anything that would make things even more complicated. So, so just to be clear, um, uh, and not to try to pin you down. I don't. don't of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, is what you're saying that the Secretary General, by using the word unconditional, release of hostages and immediate humanitarian ceasefire does not see them linked. Uh, he would want the ceasefire um, even without the release of any hostages. Is that fair to say? I, I, no, it, it's, it's, I, I would not say it's fair to say. Um, Jordan. I have to come back to the same subject you were discussing. Um, I, I'm not sure if you have read the statement by the um, Department of State on the courage war between Cyprus and Gaza. They mentioned nine uh, partners, but they did not mention the United Nations. However, in the second paragraph, they mentioned Ms. Sigrid Krach. I, don't, I read it. You read it. Um, and as she said yesterday, uh, that she was actually in Cyprus. And you just also mentioned that she has a team in I Cyprus. Did. I did say all this. Now, things. it's so confusing. I mean, well, not your answers, but, uh, but it's like we have to, uh, to know how things are going to work, because we, we, we don't know. 
Uh, is she part of the UN or, or, or what? Why she's mentioned not the United Nations as, as, as a big partner with the, with the, the other nine, uh, uh, Germany, um, Cyprus, Greece, etc. If you have, if you can also well, talk I, about. I think for the, it, listen, you're, we're all confused, right? I mean, it's a very confusing situation. I mean, broadly, it's, it's a very dynamic situation. Things change, but it is clear we are not an operational partner to this sea corridor, right? The, the Department of State put out a statement, which I think was very clear. They're, yeah, doing, okay. they're doing this, in, and they're also in contact with Sigrid Ka, given she was given a mandate by the Security Council uh, to create a mechanism uh, for the safe and effective uh, and large-scale distribution of aid, not to mention reconstruction. So obviously these people, these partners have gone together, they're mounting an operation. It is only normal that we are then there and talking to them to make sure that all of the efforts, all of the money that will be spent, all the aid that will be sent is, is delivered in a safe and, and as coordinated manner as possible. When you say earlier that she has technicians team in Cyprus, don't you think this is part of the operation? No. Okay. One more thing, the um, U.S., I mean, U.N. humanitarian coordinator in Palestine acting, the, Jamie. Yes, sir. What is the relationship, working relationship between Jamie and Ms. Kah? Because he went to Gaza and she's the coordinator for Gaza. It's a very good relationship. No, I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't mean to be, to be, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, to I'm be not I mean, I it's, mean, you know, just, they, they are, he, he has a mandate, he is the acting resident humanitarian coordinator for the UN on, um, uh, for the occupied Palestinian territory, which includes the West Bank and Gaza. She has a mandate from the Security Council uh, to do what her mandate tells her to do, and uh, the, the Security Council resolution is, is very clear. You're not wrong in saying there are a lot of high-level UN players, but I can tell you that they are working in a coordinated manner, and I can also tell you that the Secretary General has told them all, extremely clearly, to all work well together. And, and this is the last one on the same subject, please. The same subject. Who is the boss of Ms. Sigrid Kach? And she, who is the boss of she, Jamie? She, and who is the boss of Queensland? And who I mean, is the boss? Read, read the can, can I finish read, the question? Read, the, her, her terms of reference, she reports to the Secretary General through Martin Griffiths. Uh, Mr. McGoldrick, as a lot of UN people, has wears, uh, wears many hats. They all work for the Secretary General of and the United Nations, Antonio Guterres. Jordan, I'm going to ask you to one put, promise. Uh, no, Jordan, I'm going to ask you to pause for a second. I will come back to you. You had a question. Yes. Uh, so Alice Jill Edwards actually said earlier in, at the Human Rights Council that she's received... Uh, Who did, sorry? Alice Jill Edwards, the... Um, pardon. <laughs> the, the, uh, the special... The human... Uh, the, uh, the the UN expert on torture. Uh -huh. uh, no, so like she said that she's investigating allegations of um, mistreatment of Palestinian detainees by the Israeli military, and she's even made a request to visit Israel to conduct an investigation. Um, but they've uh, she's not yet received a response or like. But in the and the Israeli uh, military has actually stated has denied um, such al that, uh, these allegations. So. In the event that she is um, denied her request to enter Israel, how will she be expected to conduct her investigation? I, I, listen, that's a question uh, for her, but often human rights uh, experts or fact-finding missions uh, have mandates, and they're not always given access to the places where they need to be, but they write a report based on information available through other means. Can that be used as an evidence of? Uh, well, at that whether or not it's, it's it, 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 it will be written up in a report. How that report is used then is up to, to others. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go to Iftikhar, who has a question. Iftikhar? Uh, thank you, Steph. My question was for Mr. Lakwa, uh, the Under Secretary General, but you did not notice me. I'm, I'm sorry, Iftikhar. I just, I'm trying to do too many things at once. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. 
Deji, and then Jordan, and then we'll let Monica brief. Just very quick. Uh, does this maritime corridor would, would carry the, the humanitarian aids from the UN or, or others? You can, you can say you don't know. It's uh, fine. I, I, I don't know. Okay. Okay. Yes, Jordan. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> Um, Ms. Kach also yesterday, she said that there, 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 there is a plan that um, Jordan will start going to Gaza through uh, Karam Salim with 100 trucks yeah. daily. Yes. And uh, is the UN also part of this? Uh, I, I don't know. I understand there would be some UN aid. Uh, go, I, I believe it would be trucks with UN aid, but we would have to check. Monica. All yours. Thank you. Happy Friday, y'all. Hey.